Hello and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 101, I'm going to be talking about the intersection of software development and software architecture uh, by really investigating and focusing on components and their relationship with root namespaces. So what I'm going to do is really define each of these terms and then show you some refactoring techniques uh, as an architect uh, that I do to really maintain the overall architecture within an application or a service. So one of the responsibilities of an architect is to define the architectural components. Now I know components is a very overloaded term. Um, what I'm going to define a component here is as a building block of the application. It has a particular role and responsibility in the system and also has a well-defined uh, operations within that component. A component is generally manifested in most applications as a namespace or a package structure. It could be a directory structure as well in which all of the class files or source code resides. When an architect defines a component, for example, order history, it's usually implemented by class files or through class files in a particular namespace, for example, app.order.history. Of course, the interesting thing is that components that we define as architects can also turn into services. But as you notice here, it's not always a one-to-one. -one. I've shown several examples here where a particular service can have many components within them. And so this really depends on the granularity of the service and the type of architecture style that you're using. And so that's how I'm defining a component. Components make up an architecture, which then in turn makes up the application. Components are the concern, the main artifact of an architect. We identify components, we size components, we determine component cohesion, and we also determine component coupling. That's our view as an architect. But we have a little problem sometimes when all this is implemented. Because I want to really, uh, really define now uh, the definition of a root namespace and also what is meant by an orphaned class. Um, both of these are very detrimental to a software architecture and also an architect's life. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Um, this portion of the application here, and we're going to do a simple credit card application. Now, the portion here we're going to focus on is the application process, or part of that at least, uh, where I might apply online for a particular credit card. And as a matter of fact, that's what CC is right there in that namespace. So I've got the application.cc credit card dot apply. And that's all the class files there. But we organize them by namespaces. For example, uh, the credit check is in a separate namespace, and those are those eight classes involved with the credit check to see if we can give you a credit card. Uh, also here may be the notification for the customer. Um, but the problem is sometimes developers like compartmentalizing code. And in this case, the developer chose to create a new namespace above notification called SMS. And you notice how this hill is starting to form of those three classes that are belonging to SMS. Now, once we do that SMS, the question becomes, well, what are all those other classes within notification? Uh, those other five have to do with email and letters and all sorts of other means of notification. But then we ask, well, yeah, but what about those four classes at the very top that are just in the domain apply or in that namespace apply. Oh, uh, those are metadata classes, you know, about mm, the validation, the acceptance of the, of the application, just all sorts of metadata stuff. Those are what I call orphaned classes. Now let me define what I mean about root namespaces and orphan classes. To start, um, my golden rule well, I shouldn't say my golden rule. One of my golden rules in software architecture, and this is just my personal strong opinion strongly held, is that no code shall exist in a root namespace. That's my design principle, my coding principle. And let me explain what I mean by that. A root namespace 
exists whenever we have a namespace such as apply right here and we extend that namespace. Notice this is extended to notification and credit check. That means that apply becomes a root. The same thing actually occurs with notification right here. Notification ends up becoming a root because we extend that. Anytime you extend a namespace, the prior one ends up becoming a root. Here's the problem. We have code in each of those root namespaces. I call those orphaned classes. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go back one and take a look at apply right here. What component do those four classes exist in? And the answer is none. That's why I call those orphaned classes. Because you see, as I'm doing component-based analysis of all the coupling and cohesion and size and granularity of my components, uh, these extraneous classes here are not included in that analysis, nor are these five right here in notification because there's no component. So my golden rule, which is no classes shall exist in a root namespace, requires refactoring. And let me show you what I mean on that. Uh, let's deal with notification first. So tackling notification, uh, what I will say is, well, that becomes a root namespace. No code can exist there. Um, but this SMS namespace is above that. So one of the techniques is collapsing the namespace. In other words, taking those three classes from SMS, by the way, that all start with SMS, and essentially doing a right-click refactor move to the notification namespace. Now watch what happens when I do a right-click delete. And I want you to look on the left and the right-hand side. And notice when I do right-click delete, notification is no longer a hotspot. You see, it is a root namespace, but it's now a component because it's not extended. And so now we have two well-defined components, notification and credit check. But we still have a problem because we still have orphaned classes. Now those four classes in cc.apply were all the metadata. And so, to remove orphan classes and give them a home, a defined component, we create another namespace. In this case, I'm going to create metadata, and I do a right-click refactor move of all four of those classes to the metadata. Now, certainly here, unlike the SMS namespace, I can't remove or delete apply because all my code would be gone. But apply is no longer a component. It isn't a component. It's a subdomain. And as a matter of fact, if we look here, I now have three well-defined components with no orphans. So remember, an orphaned class is one that exists in a root namespace. A root namespace is defined as any namespace that is extended by another element in that namespace name. Let's do another example, though, because I want to show you a case that's very common. I might say no classes can exist in a root package or a root namespace. Now, CC apply that I've highlighted here in red is in fact a root. It's a root namespace because it's extended into notification and credit check. Well, Mark, you can't remove those because that's all the shared code. Those are our interfaces and abstract classes and utilities and they're used by both notification and credit check. You can't go moving those, but yes, I can because they're still orphans and we need to give those classes a home, a component. So pick a word that's not used in any of your namespaces in your application. For example, dot shared or dot shared code or shared things, something that's unique. And now I take right click refactor move of those shared code into a shared component therefore still creating three components. Now, if I were converting this over to, let's say, microservices, here I would have two well-defined services, a notification and a credit check, but also that shared becomes usually a shared library 
or in the case of composition, could potentially become a shared service. And so the point here is as an architect and also a developer, and still I'm a hands-on architect, I pay attention to these things because we need to really preserve the architecture within our applications. And we move from this kind of mess that contains root namespaces with orphans into something that's very clean and well-defined that now I can analyze as an architect. All right, fantastic. So uh, these are my opinions, uh, strong opinions, strongly held. Um, I know there's a lot of people who will disagree with me. Um, I'm taking this as a view of an architectural view of my source code and identifying those building blocks, those components. This is highly useful for migrations and really understanding the architecture. As a matter of fact, to gain more understanding of architecture, there's two places you can go to. The first is our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which we published in February of 2020, um, and also uh, my website, um, developer2architect.com, where uh, these lessons are housed under the lessons link in Software Architecture Monday. Um, also, uh, references and links to books, videos, um, articles, all sorts of really interesting stuff in software architecture. It's really meant to help you in that transition um, from uh, developer to software architect. And also, uh, Neil Ford and I do Foundations Friday Forum, and that's the forum link there, uh, where you can register for free, free Q&A sessions that we do every month. Fantastic. So this has been Lesson 101, Components and Root Namespaces. Um, one of the things you can do, given this idea, is to actually analyze your own code base right now and say, hmm, how many orphans do we have, either in some of our services or even in our monolithic application, and take an architectural look at that source code so that everything has a home. Please stay tuned. Uh, in two weeks, I'll be releasing Lesson 102, where we'll talk about some other aspect of software architecture. Until then, stay safe, and thank you all so much for listening.